Today we're gonna make a charcuterie board, potentially two. My mom is hosting something at her house for a bunch of her work friends. She asked me to make her a charcuterie board. I'm gonna double check how many people she has, but for sure we're making at least one. And the first step for us today is gonna be to go and pick up everything that we need. Unfortunately, I hurt my back a couple days, so I can't really browse the aisles with you guys, but I do have a pickup order at Sam's Club scheduled for this morning. And then we're gonna double check everything that I got there and head to Aldi afterwards. First things first, let's go to Sam's Club. Guys, we got our stuff from Sam's Club, which was mostly the grapes and the salami, the pepperoni. We have some berries and stuff, but now we are at Aldi and we're gonna walk in there and get the rest of what we need. I feel like this whole using the quarter thing to get your cart always throws some people off. Oh look, someone left it in there. That was nice of them. It's just to borrow it. That one didn't wanna come with me. I always grab these. Pretty much every store sells these. Some version of them, but 369, that's not bad. Then they always have a lot of nuts and stuff. Definitely a good mix or something that's just salty. I like to keep salty stuff on the board. Dried fruit, that's always a good idea as well, but not today. This was not on my list, but I really like using summer sausage on my boards. So I think I'm gonna grab one today. And they have a great like big pack of hard salami if you're interested, but I prefer the one from Sam's because I can fold it. Great produce, lots of good organic fruit and stuff like that, so. It is a great place to grab your produce. Their end caps are usually a little bit more stocked, but they do have good fruit spreads, which we don't need today. And then of course stuffed olives, which I am gonna get stuffed olives, but I don't want these ones. And I have bought this one as well before. This is good if you make it often, but otherwise you probably don't need to spend seven bucks on that. I like the garlic stuffed olives. They also have jalapeno stuff, which I've never tried. And sometimes they have these roasted peppers that are stuffed. They're so good, but they're hard to find. They also normally have like kind of pre-done stuff. So they have like this little tapas tray which has the peppers in it that I was talking about. They have a good selection of meat and cheese. This is definitely a place to go for cheese. They have a variety of like, you know, regular stuff like salami, prosciutto, and then you have the one with three different kinds in it. This one has capicola, which I'm not a fan of. And then you have this one over here, which has the meat and the cheese. And then you have the different uh, antipasta and uh, feta salad, yada, yada, yada. All this adds to it, but none of it's necessary. However, I do love a goat cheese. Cranberry cinnamon. I almost always get a brie, but um, I actually have one at home. I want a smoked cheese, either a Gouda or a cheddar, possibly both. Havarti as well also goes over very well. They have different flavors, tomato, basil, French onion, horseradish, jalapeno, dill, creamy. We're gonna do French onion. These are also really great if you're just trying to throw together one just like super quick and easy. This is only $10, which is not bad. And then they have more salami, dry, and the spicy kind. They have fun different kinds of cheeses, but I kind of like to stick to the rivers and lakes that I'm used to. I, I have never added porcelain cheese to mine, but I see a lot of people do it. So maybe today we'll give it a shot. I might grab a second breed because my mom texted me and said there's gonna be over 20 people. So we might do two boards. This one, double cream brie. Just so many cheeses. Here are their smoked cheddars. Smooth and creamy, cherry wood smoke. What is this one? Extra sharp and rich. Hmm. I think I'm gonna do this one. I'm back from the store now. So let me show you what I got from Sam's. I picked up the salami and the pepperoni because you get a ton and it's only about seven bucks, I think. So that's a really good price and they're nice and big and thin, perfect for folding, which is how we're gonna display them. I also got blackberries and raspberries. They didn't have strawberries, so that was an oldie fine. I also got my grapes from Sam's Club because they are significantly cheaper at Sam's than anywhere else, around these parts at least. And sometimes I add vegetables to mine. We'll see what happens happens today but I did get cucumbers and a medley of tomatoes just in case I choose to add that. This is what I got from Aldi in my cute little bags. I'll link the bags down below for you guys. Crackers. I like doing something pickled like these German style pickles and then of course we did olives. I did two different kinds. The garlic stuffed olives. They also had the jalapeno, the feta and they had pimento stuffed olives. Any of them are good and assortment is even better. These Kalamata olives. I also picked up this nut trio and I'm hoping this will cover both boards. It has almonds, assorted ones, and then some Sicilian snack mix with like pepita seed, pepita, are they called pepita seeds? Pepitas? And then so many cheeses. I did get a summer sausage and normally I like to get the Hillshire Farm summer sausage because I don't know, they're kind of nostalgic for me. You don't normally see summer sausage on a charcuterie board. Personally, I choose to include it because 
Back in the day when you used to be able to go to the mall and go to the Hillshire Farm Store, they had these $1 slices that they would heat up, they would shove a popsicle stick in it, they would dip it in their glaze, and boom, you had a little snacky poo while you were shopping at the mall, and they were so good, and it was just so nostalgic for me, so I always include summer sausage, but it's not exactly a frou-frou, fancy kind of meat. It hits every time, and never, ever do I have summer sausage left on the charcuterie board. That being said, I know my crowd and we're a summer sausage crowd. So I'm gonna do a red pepper jelly. I'm also gonna do a little bit of apricot preserves. First, you need honey. You've gotta have honey. It's so good. So I love Mike's Hot Honey. This one is actually extra hot, <laughs> um, which that ain't for me. That's for other people who want it spicy, baby. It's not for me. Okay, so if you're not traveling with your board, feel free to use those super cute wooden boards. I have one there, it's so cute, but there's no lip. There's no way to make it travel. You kind of set it and forget it. And these are my favorite boards to use because they have a lip on them. They're plastic. They are breakable as we found out because <laughs> my son broke a plate yesterday, but they are not easily broken. They do have a little lip so you can cover it in some kind of uh, I do press and seal, something to cover it. And it's very easy to transport in the car. So that's why we're gonna be using these. I believe they're only about 15 bucks. I have made dozens upon dozens of charcuterie boards on here. Never fails, perfect size for a big crowd. The other items I always make sure to have are some kind of gloves, um, some kind of food safe gloves, and that's only for the meat and cheese portion because otherwise people tend to really cross, uh, cross contaminate a bit when they're wearing gloves. They'll put on the glove, they'll move things over, and these are not clean, so now your glove is dirty and you're probably not gonna go wash your gloves. So I exclusively use gloves for the meat and cheese because I don't want to leave my little grubby fingerprints everywhere. But otherwise, I highly recommend personally coming from a non-food safety person, just wash your hands and wash them a lot. You also need containers, of course. So these ones are really affordable. They're only two bucks at Target. They're perfect, nice, shallow, wide containers. And then these ones, I think we'd previously gotten from Pier 1, which has since gone out of business. I also have these little ramekins from Pier 1. Sorry, I can't link them, but you can find something similar. Step one was obviously cleaning the boards off, and then my favorite thing to do first is to actually set out my little containers, and then I build around them. So we're just gonna be even Steven on this board, and I'm gonna do four and four. What's gonna go in them? I have no idea. Let's let's see what happens. We put out our nuts, we put out our olives, calamata, and the garlic stuff. I did double pickles, because pickles are always a favorite. This red pepper jelly is so good. The apricot jelly is so good. Hot, hot honey, and then we have the regular honey. It's way, way, way easier to manipulate the cheese and the meat around these versus trying to shove them in at the end. So I always start with my little vessels first, and then we go from there. When I'm making charcuterie boards, I normally try to have three to four types of meat. So we have the salami, the pepperoni, the prosciutto, and the sausage this time. And then I usually try to have a harder cheese, like a really sturdy cheese, softer cheese, and then usually something kind of in the middle. And I like for them to be very strong in flavor sometimes, but other times just very mild, just kind of something to let, you know, the jelly or the honey shine. So I always have brie, always. I always have cheddar, always. I normally like to have a smoked cheese, so we're doing the Gouda this time. And then I normally do a really, really soft one, like a goat cheese. It's time to slice our brie, and I'm not a fan of moldy brie. I don't like moldy cheeses generally, but I like the taste of brie. I think it really makes your charcuterie board. That being said, I like to trim some of the outside off. Um, not all of it, but just enough. It really depends. Some people think it tastes kind of soapy, I guess. Is it soapy? I think it tastes like soap. Yeah, kind of soapy. So I, I'm gonna trim them down a little bit just in case anyone's a little skittish when it comes to brie. There are lots of different ways to display brie. I usually go a simple like pie cut. It seems to be the easiest to actually grab and eat. If you're making a charcuterie board, I would typically say to avoid the pre-cut cheeses only because oftentimes they have stuff kind of around them. I don't know if it's like some added little something or other to keep them from, you know, squishing together. Well, I don't know what it is exactly, but normally they're more expensive and then you can't really control the cut and what they look like and i think it's kind of fun to be able to control the cut i wish i had gotten a pie slice type of cheese because then you could do that like overlapping it just looks cool so have fun with how you're uh, displaying your cheese i like to make the brie the center of the show so it's going to go right in the middle all right i'm going to do a little stacking situation with the brie over here so i'm just going to kind of turn it on its side this could have looked better if i had left the top on but i didn't want to i don't like to see moldy cheese. I also think blue cheese is disgusting 
And so is Gorgonzola. You always have to try your product. Make sure you're not serving people poison. We could put a couple berries in the center of this. That could look kind of cute. I like it, a little color. I have the cheese. I did two cubed. This is the truffle cheddar. This is just the smooth and creamy cheddar. It was definitely crumbly. This is the smoked Gouda. This, I cannot tell you how delicious this is. It is the oniony Havarti, and then this is a mild white cheddar. So we're gonna go ahead and just spread these out amongst the board. My kids had to replace the batteries for me. So in the meantime, I laid out our cheddar. So I did the cheddar like that, just kind of, um, what's it called, like staggered a little bit. This cheddar is so good. This is that mild Irish one. Wow, that is so good. We're gonna do a similar thing. No, should we? Yeah, we will. No. I'm gonna put this over here and this over here. Yeah, I like that better. One is gonna have the onion Havarti, also staggered like that. I'm actually gonna go from one little container to the next. That's gonna be our next one. Get back up there. And then for the smoked Gouda, I'm just gonna line it up like that. And again, go from one container to the next. I don't love it against the edge, but it'll, it'll be fine. And then we're just gonna drop a bunch into a corner. The truffle cheddar in this corner, and the soft cheddar in this corner. I'm not a huge fan of cubing the cheese, but sometimes when it's crumbly like this, it leaves me no choice. But not a lot of people like a giant mouthful of cheese. Next, we're gonna go ahead and drop a soft cheese onto each one. So I need to find a little spot. I think I'm gonna go here. This one's gonna get the boars in. Boom. Time to cut the goat cheese, because otherwise, like, no one eats it. I mean, they wanna eat it, but they don't wanna just have at it, you know? Cutting goat cheese is not a cute time. It's not adorable. So now we're gonna take our halfway chopped goat cheese and go ahead and put it on this board. Don't forget to try your cheese. Oh my gosh, that goat cheese is so good. Salami rose process is in fact very simple. You just fold it halfway over. I'm sure you've seen this a million times or never at all. I don't know what your feed looks like, but mine has a lot of charcuterie on it. So you just take your salami and you fold and you twist, and you fold, and you twist, and you fold. Can you guys see my watch? Because I'm supposed to be at my mom's house by two, and it's giving, I'm gonna be late. They're just so easy to make. You just get your little champagne flute, you fold a million pieces of meat over it, and then you flip it out. My favorite part of this is actually that it comes out in order, basically. So, like, as you want one, you're pulling from the top, and they are unraveling themselves. So it doesn't become a disaster, it's not a mess, it's not a bunch of meat being touched. You can literally just touch the one piece you want. So that's how, that's about how full I make it. And then I just go ahead and I flip to wherever I want it to be. And I'm thinking I'm gonna put this one right here. Not me not showing you guys, sorry. I just flipped it right here, perfect every time. I'm gonna go ahead and make some more of these out of the salami and the pepperoni. Pepperoni is the exact same thing. We got a pepperoni rose ready to go. We're gonna drop this one right over here. Boop. We're gonna do another rose. You know to stop when the hole is completely full. That's, that's how you know you really can't fit anything else down there. In fact, this one I didn't quite bend it enough and it'll create a wider rose which is not a bad thing, but it's not necessarily the look I was going for. If you don't wanna do the roses that we did, the other thing I like to do is to just fold it, just kinda of like that, and we'll create like a little snake of meat that goes through any empty spots. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the sausage, lay that out, and then we'll do our crackers. I'm gonna skip the uh, prosciutto today. It's not necessary. We have enough. Once the majority of the meat and cheese are on, the big areas get filled in with the crackers. The small areas will get filled in at the end. I never use a whole container of crackers on one board, but obviously Obviously we have two boards today. And I try to take out any broken ones. Not that there's anything wrong with a broken cracker, but you know. I wouldn't worry about it looking too crowded or anything, cause I think the more in, that it has, honestly, the better it looks. As you can see, we still have some openings here. So we've come to the fruit and veggie portion. And this is when I just fill it in. Sometimes I just like to put a whole cucumber on one side. I think it's kind of like a vibe. Nice. Some people are really big on dip. I'm just kidding. Obviously I'm gonna cut that. You don't see a lot of vegetables on these, but I do like to add tomatoes, a little bit of acid to kind of break up you know what's going on here and I actually just leave them whole if you want to be cute you can cut a couple for the very top so let's just add in a little bit of veg just in any openings we see careful not to like really disrupt what's going on already but yeah I definitely like to see a little color on the charcuterie board it's like when you go to the grocery store and they slice the fruit open and they put it on top so that you can see what it looks like on the inside that's pretty much what we're doing here this looks really cool when you do it with a fig 
it looks less cool when you do it with a tomato. Doesn't mean you can't do it, just means it doesn't look as fun. Now, I'm no chef, but if you just kind of slice off some of the outside and then you chop it, always try your cucumbers because they will get you gut. Then we just have little cucumber slices. That's my mom. I'm not sure if I told you guys the actual reason I was making these is because my mom, uh, she works at a hospital with a bunch of other nurses. She's a nurse. Uh, she gets all of these people together and at my parents' house, they basically host a tamale making day. Whereas normally we would have just done it as a family. Her friends from work are so interested and they want to learn and they want to be a part of it and they want to do it and they want to take home tamales. So she just hosts everybody. Her and my stepdad teach everybody how to do it and kind of lets us off the hook because now us, the grown children, you know, we don't we don't help and it definitely helps my parents to have a bunch of other adults around who are more than willing to help and they're basically paid in tamales. Since I'm not helping make them and I'll just be sitting around having a cocktail, I'm sure, I thought I could contribute by bringing something for people to snack on. Because if you ever made tamales, you know they take freaking forever and uh, you get a little hungry on your way. Not to mention my brother's bartending, so people are going to be drinking and we need them to soak that up a little bit. We're gonna add some strawberries. I normally like to chop off the little green part. I don't always do it, but I do find that they're just easier for you to pop into your mouth. There's less garbage left on your plate, which makes it easier for you to go back and just refill it because it doesn't feel like it's dirty. It just feels like it's empty. And an empty plate can easily be refilled, but a dirty plate, sometimes you're like, nah, should I go, where's the garbage? You know what I'm saying? This is how I used to present them to my kids as well. And they are just little tiny hearts, basically. So I'm gonna leave these whole, we're adults, we can eat a whole strawberry. Plus I feel like once you start cutting strawberries, they just, they go south quick. Make sure you don't put anything super wet next to anything that's super dry, like the cracker. If you put them next to the crackers, they might soak your cracker and then who the heck's gonna eat it? And again, the point of the board is one, sure to look nice, but two, to be eaten. I hear a lot of people saying like, show me the board at the end because they think that all of the food is going to waste. And uh, I will say there have definitely been missteps for me along the way of making charcuterie boards and making them almost like a challenge to eat and you really don't want to do that. Unfortunately, having a little waste definitely happens, but it's when almost the whole board gets wasted. That's that's the one that really smarts. While I'm doing my daughter's hair, this is just going to sit in the fridge and then it's going to go straight to my mom's house and if she's not ready for it, it'll go straight to the fridge. I don't like to leave it out unnecessarily. Normally, I get these made way quicker, but filming obviously has, you know, it slows me down a little bit. And while I've done this video in a very short form format where, you know, I showed it to you in 60 seconds, I just think that like long form recipes and tutorials and stuff like that, I don't know, they hit a little different. You guys will have to let me know if you enjoy them because I'd love to do more of them if you want to see it. A lot of people will fill in their open spaces with greens like, you know, basil or mint or this or that or whatever. And that's really cool, but I find that nobody eats it. And I didn't really want, I, I looked at it, I thought about it today just to be a little cutie pie for the internet, but I didn't really want to buy anything that I knew no one was going to eat because it was still going to cost me, you know, $4 for a little pack of basil or mint leaves or whatever. If this was the summertime and I had my garden going, that would be a different story. I would definitely pluck a little bit and put it on the board. Since I don't, and I would have had to buy the herbs, it's a no for me, dog. I will say the blackberries are really tart, so if they end up left on the board, I will not be surprised. All right, let's go ahead and add what I normally make the final piece, which are the grapes. Whoa, that honey is super hot. Holy cow, I'm gonna have to warn people. This honey is very hot. Grapes always go, so I don't mind if there's a ton on the, on the board. When it comes to grapes, I have one tip, okay? Put it on the board wherever you want it to be, and then with a pair of kitchen shears, go in and cut some of the little vines because what's gonna happen is someone is going to try to get a grape and then they're gonna end up picking the whole thing up and they're gonna either end up with too many on their plate or they're just gonna put the whole thing down because they didn't want every grape and then they don't have to try to pick and what, you know what I mean? They don't have to touch the other grapes. You're just picking up a couple instead of picking them all up. And while you could pluck them off, I don't think they look as good when you do that. So that's why I don't. And I do that with all of them. That's just what I like to do to make it a little bit easier. Cause the less someone has to touch the board, the better. I'm technically done now. The last piece of the puzzle is to add some little utensils. I just rinsed mine off. The little honey stir. I also have a longer one. This one came with like something else. 
We're gonna put that in there. Couple of wooden spoons. These are for the jellies, jams, etc. I have a little slicing one. This one is gonna go with our borsen cheese. I also have like a larger one that I like to put with the goat cheese. Goat cheese can be a little trickier because it's covered in stuff. So I put that by the goat cheese. Okay, and then we have some tongs. I really need more of these. The sun's starting to shine in, but we are officially done here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these um, under some press and seal, head over to my mom's house, and I'll show you at the end of the night how we did. And of course, I completely forgot to get the footage for you guys. So I texted my mom because I left before all of her guests did. And she said, unfortunately, she had already put it away. However, all that was left were mostly grapes and berries, the nut mixture, which was not a surprise because I realized after I took it that I didn't have anything for them to get the nuts out of the container with. And again, if people feel like they're going to have to touch everything, they're just not going to go for it. A bunch of tomatoes, no biggie. You could just re-rinse those. And then those Kalamata olives. The stuffed ones always go. The pickles always go. Those brown olives people don't like those as much. And then if you can see in the corner there, just like there's a little chunk of the goat cheese, some of the cubed truffle cheese, very, 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 very little meat. And then my parents had a little container of the jam, which is not pictured here, but that was it guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.